In this video, I wanted to talk about audit logs and the FileMaker platform and how that might even relate to FM Starting Point. Now first off, an audit log is not something that is natively built into the FileMaker platform. So as you're building a FileMaker solution for yourself, or you're fiddling around with a copy of FM Starting Point, it is important to note that there is no checkbox where you can just turn on an audit log. That capability is not natively built into the FileMaker platform. So I guess before we get too far into this, we should ask ourselves, what is an audit log? Well, first off, I have a basic contact database over here, and an audit log would essentially tell us who is editing the data, when they edited it, and maybe even when they viewed the information. So here is a sample audit log solution that we have. It looks like this has been developed from FM Starting Point, but I can tell you that this capability is not natively built into our FM Starting Point solution. So over here on the left, we can see that we have contacts and we even have a contact list view. As I go over here and I look at this information, all these actions are being logged into the system. And just now, my actions have been written into this audit log. Now I just now jumped from a record view to a list view. If I end up doing a search and I want to look at everyone who has a CAR and I press return and I'm going to get a found set on top of that. And the audit log has already logged the fact over here that this user has performed a search and they found this group of records. And if you click here, you can even get an entire found set of the records in the list of what they found. So as you can see, an audit log keeps track of what your users are doing in a database. So let's take a step back for a moment and talk about security in a general sense. What does FileMaker do natively to support security? Well, one of the biggest things that FileMaker does is that it provides end-to-end -end encryption of the database as it transits back and forth across the internet or across the wire. What does that mean? There's a checkbox in FileMaker server that if you activate it, all the data transactions back and forth across your local network or across the internet between the FileMaker server and the FileMaker client is fully encrypted. In this day and age where the government is listening to most conversations on the internet, this makes it exceptionally difficult for any outside third party to be listening to that conversation and seeing what data is being transacted back and forth. That capability is built in now in the FileMaker platform. But if you're securing a database, encrypting the data along the wire is only part of the equation. Starting with FileMaker 13, there's now the ability to encrypt the data in the FMP12 file itself. This is called EAR, or EAR, and it stands for encryption at rest. That means as FileMaker is interacting with the file, getting the information out, it's decrypting it in real time using it and then as it writes the information back to the file on the computer, either on server or on your local computer, that information is being re-encrypted back into that file. Now FMP12 files themselves are fairly difficult to pop open and the information there is fairly unintelligible and unreadable. But a clever developer or hacker can pop open a FMP12 file and get out of it useful information. By enabling EAR, or encryption at rest, a hacker that actually gets access to the FMP12 file itself will be unable to break into the file and read the information because the data in the file is encrypted at a 256-bit level. That's a pretty high level of encryption and you should feel pretty secure with that level of encryption with your database. So now that we've talked about encrypting the information across the wire, and also encrypting the information into the actual FileMaker file itself, let's talk about one of the last areas of security we need to think about. And that part of the equation is knowing what your users are doing. Now, if you're in the medical field, you already know all about this. The federal government in the United States has implemented what they call HIPAA. And part of HIPAA pertains to how medical records are stored in computer systems or more specifically, how they are protected within the computer system. So for example, users who log into a medical database cannot share usernames and passwords. They have to be individually identified. 
and medical databases have to have fully robust audit trails implemented so as users are going through the system and working and looking at patient information, their activity is being fully logged. It would be really great if this capability was just built into FileMaker, but it's not. And actually setting up an audit trail takes the work of an experienced FileMaker developer. It's not something that's just easy to wire together. Of course, with the advances in the FileMaker platform, there are probably a dozen different ways of programming an audit trail under the hood to make this work within your FileMaker solution. Now let's talk about the important business aspects of an audit log. First off, if you're going to have a solution that requires an audit trail or an audit log, you need to identify where you want the audit trail to be installed. But what I mean by this is what parts of the database do you want tracked so as users interact with those parts, that behavior is written into the audit trail. Now the default answer that I get from most people who talk about this is that I want the audit trail to be installed on all screens of my solution all the time so I can track what all my users are doing. And if you go to your FileMaker developer and say that, then you're going to receive a quote for a much larger project than maybe you wanted to pay for. So the first thing you really need to do is identify where you want your audit trails. If you have a database that tracks snack food purchases within your company, for example, maybe that does not require top-level security with encryption at rest, point-to-point -point encryption, and a full audit trail. Of course, if you have employees like I do, this might be the one area where you really want an audit trail, given my staff's propensity for M&Ms and sodas from the company refrigerator. That being said, most organizations are going to be able to identify the important critical areas where they really need to track what their users are doing and what records those users are viewing and maybe what records are being edited. One of the areas you have to start thinking about is how you track an audit trail for records that are being deleted. Now of course this brings up a whole different concept that we talk about in other videos and that's the issue of users deleting records out of databases. And in general this is a bad idea. If a user has a record that they don't want anymore maybe we should consider having them just change the status of that record to inactive. But in the event that you actually want to delete a record, you might want to delete it here in the contact area and then have the audit trail wrap up all the information and save it over here and then make a note that this person deleted this record. That way the audit trail actually preserves some or all of the data that's being deleted. So that might be a really important function of your audit log. So in summary, FileMaker can do audit logs. Setting them up will take an experienced FileMaker developer to assist. Or it will take a little bit of training from our FileMaker Pro video training series. Either way, it's going to take some effort. You will want to identify the modules or sections in the database where you really need to apply the audit log. Do you need it in the contacts area? Do you need it in the invoicing area? It might be very important there. And do you need it in projects? In FM Starting Point, we actually have a small audit log that operates and revolves around the area of product quantity management. So if you're in the products area and you're changing the quantity of available product, there is an audit log built in that keeps track of the usage of those fields. Now the reason we added this had to do with the number of requests we received from customers who had concerns about product shrinkage and they really did not have good visibility into where products were disappearing to. Now as it turns out, in most cases, it was not any sort of criminal theft, but is simply a function of sloppy record keeping on part of their staff. So sometimes installing an audit trail forces people to follow a more rigid process and to be honest about filing the paperwork correctly. So in a real world situation, we actually had mechanics who worked on giant helicopters who would take parts off the shelf out of the warehouse and they would say, oh yeah, I'll log that later. And then of course, they would forget to do that, which throws off the inventory control of the warehouse. Now as it turns out, parts for commercial helicopters are extremely expensive. In fact, insanely expensive, and it caused the company to have a bit of a panic as various parts, ranging in cost from $5,000 to $100,000, would magically disappear out of the warehouse and it was simply a function of the mechanics taking the parts off without logging that information into the database. So sometimes audit trails are good business processes just to force people to follow the rules. 
So back to our overview of audit logs. First, they are not built into FileMaker and they require the assistance of an experienced developer or someone who's gone through some video training. Two, the business manager of the database needs to identify where the audit logs need to be set up. Three, in the audit log, decide what bits of data you want to trap for and capture. Do you want to capture the fact that they are editing records and what those records are? Or do you want to capture the fact, like we have on the screen here, that they viewed a certain list or that they viewed certain records or that they performed certain searches and what those specific searches were for? Also keep in mind that the heavier you make the audit log and the more invasive the audit log is, potentially the more slowdown that you're going to have in your FileMaker solution in terms of performance. Now if you're on a local area network with a FileMaker server that's close by, this is generally never going to be a problem. Typically even if you have a FileMaker server over a wide area network on the internet and you're 100 miles away on a desktop or laptop and you have a pretty good connection, you're not going to notice too many problems, if any. But where the audit log could get a little sticky is when you have an iPad or iPhone and they're using FileMaker Go on some sort of 3G or 4G connection across the internet. Adding the audit log, especially a really invasive one, may cause a serious performance drop for users. And if the users cannot satisfactorily use the database, their happiness is going to go down and they're not going to want to use the database at all. So it will not matter if there's an audit trail in there or not, they're just simply not going to use the database. So you're going to have a problem with adoption at that point. So you don't want to make an audit trail so ugly that no one wants to actually use the database. The ideal situation is an audit trail which is invisible and when the people are using the database they never know that the audit trail is actually running in the background. It's invisible. Now as I move through this interface and make data entry changes or look at things, the audit trail is operating smoothly and no one can tell anything is happening at all. So it is completely invisible to the user. Hopefully this gives you some ideas about where you can go with this technology. Feel free to go ahead and download and tear apart the sample audit file and we'll dig into this under the hood in the next part of this video series.